So in this video, we're going to walk through uh, Darwin's evolution by natural selection, one of the causes of evolution. Um, the terms are not exactly the same. Evolution is any time a population changes over generations. Natural selection is one of the causes of evolution. We will soon see in Chapter 23 that there are other causes as well. Uh, but natural selection is still a very important cause of evolution of species. So uh, when we break down how Darwin's idea works, I like to break it down into four steps, four steps that I'm going to want to see in any of your explanations. Uh, we'll go into detail here after I go through an example. So there has to be some kind of competitive force. Sometimes this is also called a selective pressure, something that's making it hard to survive uh, for individuals. There also has to be genetic variety among the individuals within a population. There has to be something to select from. Um, there have to be differences uh, between individuals. Step three, once you have differences between individuals and some kind of competitive force, then you can have selection of individuals. Perhaps individuals with phenotypes that make them more successful will survive to reproduce more. We'll talk about how that means being selected for. Last step, that has to continue over many generations to really cause the population to change. So let me just give you a very simple example here. Um, uh, the example, many fishery scientists have, have documented a, a change in fish size of many fish species over generations, perhaps due to human predation uh, by fishermen catching fish. Um, so if the fisherman kind of here then represents the competitive force, uh, making it hard for the fish to survive, there might be varieties of fish. Um, um, I'm just going to focus on the variety of sizes here. Uh, fishermen typically catch and kill and keep big fish, whereas they throw perhaps the small fish back and they continue to survive. Um, so if you have genetic variety and if you have a competitive force, then you have selection of individuals. So let's say that some of the individuals here get caught. That big fish gets caught and kept uh, and killed. That fish also gets caught, that fish gets caught, but it gets thrown back so it survives, and that fish perhaps gets caught as well. Um, so let's just say that, that everyone who survives then this generation reproduces. Um, I'm just for simplicity's sake going to say that each one pr reproduces one offspring or so. I think I might have missed a fish in here as well. Um, and obviously my way of showing reproduction here is, is um, not quite accurate to how fish reproduce. Uh, one of my students in the past talked about how this is uh, uh, how fish reproduce by binary fission. <laughs> uh, in any case, please don't tell me that fish reproduce by binary fission. Okay. Um, so I reproduced a bunch of fish there, and if we were to count the new population and how many of each there were, we would see that the percentages would be quite different. That perhaps there are significantly fewer big fish and significantly more small fish than there was in the previous generation. And then my last step, um, just the idea that that selection would have to continue over many generations to really start to generate a significant change in the population. And when we say these percentages shift, we say that, we're, we, say that we are seeing evolution in progress. Um, the, the population is changing over the generations. So just some notes to make sure um, um, you're following me here. Uh, individuals do not evolve. Okay, in that example I just showed you, there was not any big fish that sort of looked at itself and said, uh-oh, I don't have very good traits for survival here. I need to become small. Um, there were just big fish who had big phenotype and small fish with a small phenotype, and um, some of them out-survived and out-reproduced the others. Individuals do not change. The smallest unit of, of, of organization that can change is the population. The population started to change over the generations as a certain individual survived and reproduced more. Um, I also don't want to see you reference any kind of like idea that they sort of see a need to change. That's what Lamarck proposed. Lamarck was a contemporary of Darwin's. Um, I only bring up Lamarck's idea because many students think in a Lamarckian way. Um, the, the individual fish aren't sitting there thinking, man, it sure would be nice if I were smaller. I'd better um, work towards making that happen, um, um, as if they sort of sense the need to be small. Um, there's no need for that in Darwin's system. There's just simply some individuals survive and reproduce more than others, and that differential reproduction is what causes the change over generations. Okay, so let's just go into more detail about the four steps and then we'll wrap up. There has to be a competitive force, something making it hard to survive. In my example, it was an outside force, another species making it hard for the fish to survive. For example, predators. 
In some cases, parasites or pathogens might also be competitive forces. Um, but the competitive force can also just be within the population itself. Um, sometimes we can just sort of say that a, that a certain phenotype might be selected for and, and causes change within the generations in a population simply because that phenotype helps some individuals be more efficient or save more energy. And that might be important if there's so many individuals in the population that there's just not enough resources for everyone. So some kind of competitive force, also called selective pressure, there has to be differences among individuals in order to select from something. In Darwin's system, that ha this has to be genetic because um, if, if, if it's not genetic, then reproducing more offspring won't change the population over generations. There have to be selection of individuals. Um, again, to be selected for doesn't just mean you survive longer. Um, in nature, if you survive longer, you probably reproduce more. But for this sort of idea that certain phenotypes and certain genes and certain alleles are, are more favored um, and are sort of more represented in the next generation, the organism that survives longer has to reproduce more. That is very important in this system. Um, biologists often use the word fitness, and, and sometimes natural selection is sort of summarized as survival of the fittest. That's fine, but a lot of students focus on the word survival there, and really the important word is fittest. Um, evolutionary fitness is simply how many um, offspring an organism reproduces. An, offspring, an, an organism is more fit in Darwin's system if it outreproduces others in its population. Finally, that, that selection typically has to occur over many generations in order to really make a certain phenotype widespread. So that's really it. You need to be able to apply um, this kind of story, um, tell me all four of the steps, and apply them to any given prompt.